Hello, everyone. Welcome to Making the Rounds. And we're still here, and I don't know if the sound is properly balanced. Also, we're wearing dark colors to protest uh, white jerseys, I guess. Yeah. Um, at some point, we'll talk about more white jerseys. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, Fashion. Another fashion review for another fashion review, but probably what we'll start with is just briefly mentioning LNG and again. Scout. Because why not? Uh, actually, yeah, someone asked for a summary because I was trying to find the episode where we talked about it, and apparently we didn't talk about it because I remember prepping to talk about it, but I think we rescheduled that we did episode. Talk about it. Did we talk, Did we talk about, about with each other? I don't know. I, feel like, I, don't I know. swear we talked about it, but the I same. couldn't find the. I could. I thought it was like the same episode as the Milky Way one, and I looked at like all the adjacent episodes because it was around the same time where we talked about the Milky Way contract yeah. jail. Not his. We had, we had like another a lot of Milky Way scandals. I am not a lawyer episode. Yeah, but Last anyway. Sport. The TLDR on the situation with why he's in a lawsuit is that he agreed to join, or he was trying to join KT, is my understanding, if I remember the team, uh, but EDG would not allow it, or it was without consulting with EDG first. So then EDG, there was another offseason after that where EDG gave him permission but not to go to a Korean team. And he contacted a Korean team. And then he ended up going to LNG, or was it LNG? Anyway, clearly I did not research this, but the TLDR is, there's a little bit of a gray area, did not re-research this, but TLDR, there's a little bit of a gray area as to why, whether you can be sympathetic with EDG or Scout. I think the main reason why people tend towards being sympathetic to Scout is because of the fact that one, he's a player, so always good. And two, uh, EDG likes to make a lot of weird social media posts about it. So when there was the EDG LNG match, they had the, they publish, they post the, the, the paperwork bracket with the contract in it as like a promo for the match. And fans are like, you guys are trolling. That's like the worst, most in poor taste thing you can do. But anyway, um, I think legally speaking, Scout being a player did a lot of things that were in breach of contract and agreement. So you can kind of, and the fact that he didn't tell his organization about the court date until like slightly before Worlds can make you sympathetic towards EDG. EDG's behavior and some of the gray area stuff can make you sympathetic towards Scout. TLDR, we are not lawyers. But update, apparently it is now likely, regardless of the rumors, that he can attend Worlds. So we care more about that today. We're not going to talk in detail about the rumors right now until more clarity is provided. Yeah, just because there are a lot of rumors that aren't true uh but then also some that are i think the big thing is that if you are rooting for lng at all or if you're looking for them to do really well uh regardless of the fact that i think uh people should lay off toothpaste a bit um i do think that true, this team is so much better so much better with Gao. too minty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every time I make that joke, there's someone that doesn't get that Yeah, Gao means toothpaste. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, I think the big thing for me is that LNG's play style is, like, so heavily reliant on Scout, and I absolutely think they'll be a better team with him. Um, you should be rooting for Scout to be there. Um, I am. Uh, even as, like I said, a toothpaste enjoyer. But uh, I think, yeah, hopefully hopefully it works out. Uh, and we we just get scouted worlds, <laughs> and we'll just forget about all of this until inevitably next year when apparently the, 
<laughs> the breach of contract illegal oh, yeah. stuff is still going on and when the lawsuit <laughs> comes up has, and has to try to, to leave the union. country yeah. again because uh, this by the way is the second year yes. that like has been a potential issue uh last year it wasn't as heavily publicized i think because they were already able to get permission for him to go uh like early enough that it wasn't um it wasn't as big of an issue like it is now. The other, the other, uh, you know, this is completely unrelated to that. But my favorite thing about Yagao and Toothpaste is that this year he talked about how he chugs Red Bull and drinks a pack, and, or not, chugs Red <laughs> Bull and downs like a pack of cigarettes, like before a match or whatever. Oh. Or no, his bre- breakfast is like Red Bull and a cigarette. That's his like pre-match routine, oh. is what he said. It's like no wonder he's such a fan of toothpaste. You know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have it. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> yeah. otherwise, your breath will perma smell like Red Bull and cigarettes, and no one wants that. So yeah, Red Bull, cigarettes, and toothpaste. Apparently, that's what you need to be somewhat good at League of Legends. Okay. Um, I do love it. I will say, like, I do love a lot of the Weibo Yagao memes, where it's mm-hmm. always just him, like, either like sitting by himself in the dark in like weird lighting. <laughs> Or like yeah. smoking, smoking a cigarette. I'm just like, how do people have this many pictures of this happening? Yep, it's a good one. But um, now that we've kind of settled that, let's do the fashion review now, since we don't actually have a lot of topics today. Um, yes, yeah, going through matchups. It's the classic making the rounds. The classic actually. making the rounds. So we'll do fashion now. Uh. There were a lot of jerseys released this week. I didn't get all of them. I just got a, a select sample. It's not a randomized sample. You know, there's definitely some selection bias. Anyway, uh, we will start with Ray. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I think is interesting is that every, like, I've noticed that everyone is either going, like, full football jerseys slash, like, polo shirts as well. This has been, like, yeah. I guess a trend in esports for a little while. Is it a trend in, like, um, fashion in general, or is it just esports, do you think? So, recently, uh, I think a trend in fashion is kind of, like, the early 2000s is coming back and uh part of that is like a very preppy aesthetic um which you can see in a lot of places uh i realized just now that i am wearing like a polo henley shirt yeah actually i really That's like polos thing. but i i, I, I oh. wear them in high school all the time and people are like kelsey like polos are not a thing like this is so nerdy like that that was like the reception i got that and my mother would be like kelsey your breasts are too big to wear polos so um... oh my god <laughs> i didn't know that was a thing until i just learned oh, apparently okay. it is anyway so those were like the common comments i would get about wearing polos and now it's just like what you wear so i was clearly like 20 years ahead of my time you were ahead of you were ahead of time (laughs) yeah um so the thing i do like the cool things that you can do with polo shirts i think are you can do things that g2 do with this jersey which is have a different color collar I also always really like when the slight button part, it has like a different pop-up color underneath it as well. So I like that. And then the detailing on the ends of the sleeves. Um, The pattern is interesting. Uh, I mean, it it makes it not just another white jersey, I guess. Uh, (laughs) But like, I feel like they were going for something with the pattern and it like doesn't quite uh hit for me and additionally the weird like black to white gradient on the side is kind of bizarre to me um which is sad because i think in the past 
like when I think of the more iconic looking jerseys that are different, they did like the baseball jerseys, which I really like. Um, just because again, it was something different and something new. This is kind of pretty, pretty standard. Uh, but I do like, there are certain things you can do with the polo that they do do on this. So I like that part, at least, especially the little red, like when you unbutton the, the top part. Um, and having the color be a different color and stuff like that. But yeah, the pattern is like... Okay, so here's my take on the pattern, okay? Uh, G2 feel like they always lose to themselves. The pattern is actually just the logo reflected across the river, I don't know, um, in the mirror, and they're just facing off against themselves. Leave. Yeah. That's the narrative I'm going for. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we have a few more of these to get through, and I don't want it to get boring. So we will yeah. move on. Uh, By G2 Polo. All right. We've got the FlyQuest NZXT Olipop, whatever thing. It's green for yeah. a change. <laughs> this, is another, this is another football jersey. Um, it actually looks way more flattering on than it does in this picture, I'll say. Like, the lines on this jersey look better, in my opinion, when they're on someone mm -hmm. than when I'm just, like, looking at this jersey flat. Um, but I actually really like this. I really love the, like, dark green, mint green, like, cream color combination. Um, I also like that in a world of white jerseys, it's not a white jersey. They have a um, a jacket, actually, that I like even more that is also like a football jacket that goes over this. Um, so I think, I mean, FlyQuest in general, in my opinion, have had some really, really cool jerseys in the past where they've done um, things that have looked like watercolor paintings to go along with like where, where Worlds is thematically and stuff like that. Um, this is a lot more like basic and boring compared to those which i think are a little bit more maximalist and cool like i know the sakura jersey is the one that everyone kind of brings up with the giant cherry blossoms it's like black it has a really cool like pink and white uh cherry blossom pattern on it um so i don't think this is like the most adventurous thing that FlyQuest have done but it's really really clean which i like and the lines of the jersey are are pretty flattering uh, when they're on someone. They're very unflattering in that in that picture, actually. Um, yeah. And then I also the thing that wasn't shown was the like jacket, and I actually really like the jacket. Yeah, I mean, I will say I was thinking about this when I was compiling these photos, and I was like, how much of me liking the FlyQuest jersey is just that it isn't it's, white? Yeah, and I think a significant portion is. Um, I do have, like, their, their LCS, like, standard jersey that they have. Uh, I feel like the logo bubbles is, like, too, I don't know, maybe I'm not Gen Z enough, but it's, like, especially on their standard jersey, it's, like, a reflected thing. It's especially silly. Um, but, yeah, this is, like, much more, I do, like, kind of solid color. I, it's funny because Andrew Barton works for them and Andrew Barton's like, solid colors. I don't want any of the shit. <laughs> All the time. And, like I said, like, I think these are really clean. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you that I yeah. think the reason why I'm being more uh, less harsh on them is because they're not just another white jersey. Yeah. Um, but I also think like FlyQuest have done these really, really cool like mm -hmm. maximalist jerseys in the past. Um, and this is not that uh, either. And so in comparison, like I said, to the Sakura jersey or the one that they had, was it for 2020 Worlds? It was like the really cool watercolor one. Yeah, yeah, 20, like a, that had like the uh, dragon on it. Finished, or oh, it was dragon, yeah. yeah. Um, that one was really pretty as mm -hmm. well and like very different looking. Um, and so they've done way riskier yeah. things with their jerseys before. Uh, and this is just like a very clean football jersey. Yeah. Uh, the, and the thing I like most is the jacket. Like the, that jacket looks like really clean and super comfortable. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
So, <laughs> anyway, also, but I have to root for FlyQuest anyway because I said the first team to announce a non-white jersey I would root for at Worlds, so... Yay! Okay. Would have been rooting for FlyQuest, honestly. Gen G. I see. I couldn't this? find a picture of just the jersey. Like I could only find this yeah. picture with the jackets. Yeah. The the jackets are pretty cool, but again, like I think the reason why I'm harsher on like Gen G and and FlyQuest in this regard is. They've had some, again, really cool creative jerseys. Like, I know everyone memes on the drawn tiger one, but you remember it, don't you? Like, yeah, yeah. that is. Um, and I know what they were going for almost with like a the streetwear style with that jersey. Um, I have a jacket from Gen G last year, which is a bit similar, I think, to their jackets this year. They tweaked it a bit, but it's the one with the like camo tiger sleeves um and it's like a varsity jacket and i actually really liked that jacket as well i think they've taken again more risks in the past and this is a very like we are here we are favorites this is a clean uh like pullover yeah. it is a pullover right it's not a zip up yeah it's a pullover um well, it has a zipper Right? Yeah. Or am I it. trolling? It looks like a pullover. You can see it on uh, the far, like the far left there, because it's all the way down. You can see he has the zipper. Oh, okay. Yeah. I almost would have liked it better if it was a pullover, because that'd be different. Too. Like. The, the oh back. yeah, the line in the center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think it would have been cool, cooler if they had done if it's gold, just a like. Yeah. Like they're on uh gold uh this gold like Well the Golden Road is dead already. Is, yeah, so. yeah, that's true. Um yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Again, it's it's kinda like the fly quest one where it's like it's clean, uh it is also a white jersey. I wanna say is it people are estimating seven of the eight like LPL O C K teams are all wearing a white kit for this world um so which makes the superstition kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point yeah but again yeah. gen g have done like this is let's I hope think, that the one team is not gonna that's not gonna wear white wins you know <laughs> that's lng right yeah. or are weibo bringing their i haven't I seen weibo, weibo is, is just a white. Their... i don't know if the lpl teams are doing anything different for worlds because usually they just show up with like the the jackets and then their normal jerseys um yeah and the jacket is white so lng like for world champions 2024 let's go <laughs> <laughs> how scout is there um but yeah like i in looking at like FlyQuest and Gen G, they've both done and like I said this about Hundred Thieves last week, right? Mm -hmm. Where we were looking at their jersey and we we're like, oh, it's the white Adidas jersey with like the the gold on it. They've done so much more interesting things for like specialty jerseys, um, and you know that includes Gen G. So like it looks cool, but I don't know, kind of boring to me. Yeah, we've got. So I added some non-major region representation. Okay. Uh, kind yeah. of, we could probably make similar things. Also, this is like not the actual shirt, or it is. It's just folded in half, I guess. Um, at least it's off-white, you know? When we're giving off -white. credit for off-white, you know, it's kind of scary, so. Uh, I mean, this is just a really basic jersey. Yeah, there's nothing uh, special, really. So. Yeah, no. It's I feel the same way about it as I did about the Hundred Thieves jersey, where it's like it's a jersey. Um, it is somewhat it has their logo on it by the logo because the logo is cool. It's because it's just the Gam <laughs> logo is the most ostentatious yeah. thing that we have. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah. Sorry, Gam. I like <laughs> you guys, but yeah. <laughs> No, honestly, though, if you have Gam's logo, you just take a shirt and you put it on, and you're yeah, like, you "That's that's, yeah, that's all you have, have cool to do." Logo. We've got the we've oh. got the logo swag. We're good. 
Uh, so yeah, not a whole lot to say about that one, I think. Um, a lot of the stuff we've said, it's like minimalist, chill. Uh, I, have a, I have a theory on this when we get to the end, but before that, oh, did God. I save this one for the end? Uh, okay, I think I'm going to save that one for the last one, so we'll do this one first. Let's see. Uh, this one's kind of fun. But had not seen this. <laughs> but okay. It's, I mean, it's still. <laughs> do we count this as white or orange? That's the real question that I have right now. This is their championship kit, so it's like supposed to be what they wear to major events across titles. Oh, okay. So it's like a whole uh, org thing. Um, it's a creamsicle. <laughs> it is a creamsicle. <laughs> It is, man, <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> uh, I don't like it, but I can't, like, uh, I can't, like, articulate why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's because, like, they could have gone harder on the, it's, I feel the same way about this pattern that I do a little bit with the G2 pattern, where it's like, oh, they could have gone, like, way harder on, I don't know. Like, it almost looks like a MC Escher drawing, but then go, like, super hard in, or maybe don't do the gradient or something. Um, and it's... <laughs> Mary Q says it looks worse than what the picture yeah, shows. because they're vaulting. It morning. looks like pajamas. That's not great. <laughs> uh, like, the, the crazy thing is, like... So they said in the description of the championship kit. Actually, I'm gonna look it up so I get the exact wording here. Um, in the championship kit wording, you click on the jersey. It says 20 years. Oh, it's the 2019 winning kit. So 2019 championship kit. Let's see this. Is it look? Does it look the same? Because. I was looking at the 2021 and it was not 2019 World Collection. Okay, I can't find pictures of it. Anyway. 2019. I don't remember their 2019 jerseys. I remember their 2018 jerseys were oh, the okay. really insane, like, oh, so the neon yellow. So it looked like they were, like, coming off at you, which was, like, terrifying, but also intriguing so the 2019 one has like the pattern but it's in black and uh, gray so like the fading pattern that's across it it's like creamsicle and white and orange it's like that but it's in black and gray which is a lot better i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> for that like so the orange is in like black and the white is gray which i think would be better I'm trying to think why people are doing so many gradients and is it because you don't want color like like the orange that close to your face i wonder i'm not really sure what the purpose of like the the gradient, gradient is. i want, think it's just like they don't they wanted a white jersey but not a white jersey you know <laughs> i don't know all right well i'll take miraki's word for it that it looks like pajamas which is unlucky I mean, the pants are very pajama-like, but, I mean, that's normal for yeah. sports. Yeah. All right. We'll do... This one is my current favorite, so... <laughs> Ooh, interesting. I'm, I'm wondering what this is going to be. <laughs> okay. We. I love the, the delay. It's my favorite part. All okay. Right. Yeah. So... <laughs> I like this outside of the <laughs> the Pepsi logo. <laughs> the best, the giant the best Pepsi part. logo. Um, <laughs> I actually really like this jersey. I think pinstripes are really flattering. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying that as a Boston sports fan, but I do think generally pinstripes are very, very flattering. Uh, I like the different colored collar, the stripes on it. I like the... Uh, the sleeve caps are also match the collar. Um, this again is like very football y, but it has details I think make it stand out more than something like the G2 jersey. 
Uh, and that's not just the color. It's like the the way the pinstripes work and then also matching the detailing on the collar and the sleeve caps. Um, it's the giant Pepsi logo is incredibly distracting, but I guess what are you going to do about it? <laughs> uh, the rest of the jersey is good. The Pepsi logo I'm is not good. But hey, we're talking about Pepsi, so like they got what they wanted. I'm a fan of the Pepsi logo because it, it reminds me of like everything in eSports where it's like it's almost good and then we give <laughs> perks and then we give perks like $10 million randomly for no reason. <laughs> and it's like, all right, this could have been good, but something really catastrophically <laughs> massive happened. <laughs> so, and it's usually money wow. related. So Pepsi, woo, let's go. Obviously, ten million dollars is a slight exaggeration. Um, <laughs> only slight. Okay. Asterisk, not real money. Uh, but yeah, that's why the Pepsi logo is very funny because it's again very a microcosm for esports yeah. too. Um, but it is legitimately like my favorite design of the jerseys as well, mm -hmm. and it's not white. So, hooray! It's a polo. So I can feel like I'm in high school again, right? Right? I mean, I don't think anyone did anything super risky with their jerseys this year, which is kind of sad. Oh. Um, Usually there's at least one team that does something, like, really out there, but quick, I haven't seen anything. Quick bonus round. The official Raito Games World's 2024 jersey has dropped. I don't know why this exists. I just put it there. But it's also, oh, God. It's also a polo. Oh, God, I hate this. I'm so excited to Sorry, see Riot. Emily wear this on broadcast. Let's God, go. Please, no. <laughs> this looks like a referee jersey. Also, what is the why, why, why are we is. doing the gradient? Why is Worlds fading into non-existence? <laughs> because League is fading into non-existence. God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God, so true. Um, <laughs> So the things I don't like about this, you know how I was talking about the detailing matching on the Mad Lions? Like, unironically, that's really good. This one, there's no sleeve caps, which is driving me insane. And the, like, collar has the, instead of having actual buttons, it has a weird, like, elastic thing here. Why? I don't know. What is the purpose? Emily out on the field wearing the 2024 World's <laughs> Ref jersey. It does look like a referee jersey, honestly. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're going with, but I was looking at it. It's like, why is Riot releasing a jersey? Like the the biggest complaint that I've gotten from esports fans who have burnable cash and would like to buy merch is that pretty much teams just release jerseys and not like a lot of other apparel. So, what this is like part of my philosophy as to why stuff is super minimalist is that the biggest thing complaint esports fans seem to consistently have about merch is that they want something that they can just wear casually, like on a casual day that isn't like too ostentatious or I'm really repping the team in a game, like this kind of thing. So instead of releasing like a jersey and a more wearable piece of apparel, we've like more minimalized our jerseys we've turned them into polo shirts we've taken color and life away because apparently minimalist equals nothing i don't know uh but yeah, i mean <laughs> yeah i also think like you think about the evolution and people don't actually want me to get into this uh, but I could do a whole like I'm video. I'm sure that the like, top comment will be, "I want Emily to." Yeah, I want fashion <laughs> corner and how it relates to traditional sports. But like, if you think of the evolution of, uh, like, athletic garments in general in the United States, and then also athletic garments when it comes to traditional sports in particular, I'm thinking basketball is something that's been like hugely influential in terms of like the evolution of people wearing athletic uh, wear outside uh, and not like as just a part of daily life in a casual setting and not um, as something you only wear for 
fort. Um, and I think your point about like jerseys not being something that like when was the last time you actually saw an esports jersey in the wild, not at an event? Because like I cannot remember. I think there was when I first moved here. I saw someone in the grocery store wearing a C9 jersey in like 20, what, 17, 2016, 2017, 2017. Um, and that was it. Like other than that, it's, uh, it's people wear jerseys to events and like, that's it. Well, I, I think wear, the, I still wear EG crap everywhere because that's my entire wardrobe. So <laughs> I also think like there are really cool things. Like for yeah. example, my friend Linda has the EDG, like the old. I think it's like their twenty six, their twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen like yeah. motorcycle jacket. Mm -hmm. That thing is sick, and it doesn't say like to the point. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. say sports. it's not a jersey. Like you can just wear it out. It's a really fucking cool jacket. Um, that's also why I loved the LPL, like, uh, before they had crazy as our game, what was it? Uh, it was something fighting the logo, but anyway, yeah. it was this really sick rain jacket that had a open back with the pop of color and the, the yeah, slogan yeah. on it. And that, again, it's just a cool j rain jacket. Like it doesn't scream esports. Yep. Um, there was like a nice, I feel weird for keep using um, EDG merch, but they used to have like, I don't, I don't know how their merch lines are now, but like they used to have really nice merch lines yeah. where like a nice sweater that just says like nice and it has the picture of the, the dog, dog on yeah. it. And that also is a piece of esports merch, but it doesn't read. Yeah, e EDG was right. also one of the first teams to do like a women's clothing line. Um, so they had a lot of stuff. But it was, yeah, I think it's it's just something that's a little weird. Like, I would say even the 100 Thieves stuff, right? Like, a lot of it is wearable wherever. But also, some of it is ostentatious. So it kind of just depends. But, like, the, for example, if you look at their, their Fall Foundations 2024, it's mostly, like, solid colors. They also have some plaid, which, you know, I'm down. Yeah, I saw the the foundations line was like pretty pretty minimalist. I have I will say I to to correct, the only time I've seen someone wearing a jersey outside of esports was in the yeah. grocery store, like I said. But I have seen people wearing Hundred Thieves actual merch um yeah. around LA. Oh, there's also a women's collection. Interesting. Fun fact, there was not a women's collection while I was there, and my coaching uniform was a Nike tracksuit in men's, so it looked very flattering on me. Anyway. Um... I mean, I will say, again, also as <laughs> someone who um, maybe isn't a normal size of a human, mm -hmm. although apparently people tell me I have tall energy, I'm only five feet tall, um, the finding like cool clothing in general, I feel like at least for me, from growing up as a kid who was like a huge, huge sports fan and a girl, uh, it's been a slow road to get cool merch across yeah. the board in traditional sports. And even now, for example, I was wearing a hockey jersey the other day. I bought it in the smallest size possible. It's still fucking enormous and very unflattering. <laughs> Um, which is something you just kind of expect, uh, like, uh, grow to accept. Um, but yeah, like, it's not like, it's not like traditional sports has not had this issue yeah. either. They've just recently gotten a lot better. So yeah, I, we'll see. yeah, I mean, for sure. I'm not, that's the other reason why I think like the polo thing is happening too, is because you can just wear polos. So if it's like a polo jersey. It's less mm -hmm. like a jersey and more like a shirt you would wear. Um, but that's like... I'm, uh, that Invictus Gaming polo you gave me mm -hmm. that I wear just like yeah. as a shirt. It's chill. So, yeah. 
And that's from what, 20... 20... Seven. It was like 2015? 2016? 2015, yeah, it's One of those two years, yeah. Um, all right, so it still holds up. Nice. We've got... So we should talk about actual games. Or the dog, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> oh, we finally get <laughs> Colin on screen. You have a t tail. Nice. Uh, anyway. But, um... Yeah, I think the so we should probably talk about actual games that are gonna happen. Uh, yeah, let's go. So traditional making the rounds. Um, we're just gonna go through the play-in openers and talk about the teams. So first one is Mad Lions versus Viking Esports, which similarly fun teams, I think, in a way. I think the places on the map where they're fun are different in terms mm -hmm. of when you're looking at Vikings. I definitely think you're looking at uh, Kati and then Shogun and BA in the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think, um, and this is also where a potential mismatch could happen with Merwin um, and versus Nanue. Yeah, Nanua uh, is, I mean, Vietnamese tops traditionally outside of... <laughs> Kiaya. Yeah, are interesting. Um, I mean, I think, so based on what VOD review I was able to do, it did seem like he improved over the course of the split. It also felt like he was given a lot of grace by his team when, you know, mm -hmm. you have your lanes uh being able to win or like some of your players again like Kadi and Shogun are able to pick things up very quickly um are able to just kind of dominate their opponents so a lot of pressure in some of those situations was taken off of him um I still think he's gonna have a pretty rough time and I think one of the big um strengths of mad like individually is not just merwin's play but also his ability to pick things up really quickly and and pick interesting counter picks so i think that's definitely lane for lane the biggest mismatch here for me um and then i think the i don't know both of these teams will be willing to take fights that they probably shouldn't. Mm -hmm. However, depending on draft, I might even favor Vikings in some of these situations, despite the fact that I think like Mad are going to win the ser like the best of three. I think if if they take really dumb fights as they are wont to do, um, I think. Vikings can actually pretty easily take advantage of that, especially with their bot duo and mid laner. Um, I'm trying to think of how the meta shifts are going to affect these teams, because I actually think a big change for me, I know everyone's pointing out like, oh, AP mids are back, mages are back, minus is here, because they still like really, really gutted him. Talking to the um, balance team, they absolutely do not want this to be another zero quirky meta. Mm -hmm. They basically said, like, if it's that, we have failed epically. Um, but the big thing for me is like jungle and this difference between playing for your lanes yeah. and your lanes playing for you. And so I think the jungle shift in particular could be really, really good for Elioia. Um, because it'll allow him to really a lot better and maybe either get his lanes ahead to the point where when they are taking those fights it's not as terrible of an idea uh just having him be the engine of this team on something that is you know more like i mean i think sedge is going to be hotly contested but like xin Zhao, i jarvin um those kind of things could be a massive benefit for mad so I have like 
again, I think we talked about this, but I have two minds on this. The main one for me is like, yes, you'll be able to play jungles that affect lanes more, but the play style will still be more optimized around farming because jungle XP hasn't changed, right? You can change items all you want, but it's still going to be more efficient to actually farm your camps. So like I said, I think Hecarim is like an underplayed one, things like this. Um, I can even play Shen Dungle, honestly. Like, it's not like Shen's OP. Ew. Uh, but I think, fun. but I think, like, I'm kind of expecting it to be, like, the, the, the style of play to not change too much, but obviously Elioia will still play the Genki Junglers. I think Tom Rio still will as well. Like, his most played are previously were, like, German Zin, um, in, in the history of his existence. <laughs> Are they going with Tomrio? Because Guri played like the majority of their games. Their games, maybe. Yeah. Because that wouldn't make any sense to me to do. Yeah. Because Guri maybe... won't play their jungler. So maybe that like it depends again on because yeah Guri did play most of summer. Yeah. You're right. Uh, let me see. Actually, I'm curious because I was like, I watched the games in a very half awake stupor. And I was like, oh, Tomori is starting juggler. This is clearly how closely I pay attention to the nameplates. Um, but I think... No, Guri started every single game. Yeah, I, yeah, no, no, no. I wasn't I, sure why Leaguepedia was listing Tomori as their starting But I mean, if you look at the one for... Because I at least catch, caught it when I was looking at the... Um... Oh, fuck. The gam... The... Gammy Sports lineup, and it was kind of similar. They had, uh, oh no, it wasn't Gammy Sports, it was the PSG Talon lineup because they had the um, other mid listed above Maple on the roster for some reason. And I was like, <laughs> Maple literally played every game, okay? One, yeah, uh, no, I, I would think Guri is definitely their starting jungler, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm actually just gonna look at Guri's historical stats. Yeah, I mean, he played a lot of the ganking junglers, it looks like, too. Like, Lisa and Rel. Like, in the, in the early, se in spring, and then, of course, like, in summer, he's mostly focused on, it looks like, Maokai, I say. So, I'm guessing that's what we'll get out of that matchup. Because I was watching the games as well, and he was playing a lot of those, the, those champs. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's what we'll get out of it. The other funny thing about Gam is just their poster. Vikings. <laughs> Not Gamma, sorry, Vikings, yeah. Their poster. If you've seen that. No. <laughs> it's no, my, it's my favorite thing about them. Uh I haven't put it I didn't put it in the uh the the thing, but it's uh literally the center is just S of M. In the nice. middle. Nice. And then you've got like the, the other two coaches in the background. And in the middle you have under him it's it's like Kati and then they have like as far away from like Guri's also in, they have like the other junglers on opposite sides. I have the have Guri and Tom Rio on like opposite sides. And it's like everyone is small like, except for S of M, the c other coaches and Kati for for some reason. It's the stars of the, the team right there. That's what we've got. Um, I will yeah, say, yeah, marketing I've, always been a, <laughs> I've always been a, a BA defender, I guess, uh, which I, um, I still think their bot lane is really good. I think they can do a lot of creative things with the spot lane, actually. Um, Shogun is similarly, like, he seems really willing to play different things. Like, I think when you look at these two teams and a lot of where the creativity and draft is coming from, for um, yep. Vikings, it can be through their bot lane, mm -hmm. whereas for Mad, it can be through their top lane. So that's something really interesting to watch out for. Also, I think Kati will be very, very comfortable in a mage meta. Yeah. That's what he has played, like, previously. So even though he was actually from what I saw, really good on AD mids. Um, I think, like a lot of players, uh, mages are also going to be remarkably comfortable for him. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing 
about this team is obviously like Shogun is going to be a really flashy player. But um, like I do like to give a shout out to um, you had mentioned this before the show started, like for a lot of these teams, it's kind of up in the air as to whether they can even exist next year with a lot of the structural changes of the global esports league. Um, so for me, it's like a, a player like BA, players like Kati, who have just been consistently like doing well within their region for a long time. It's like very great to see, get to see them at Worlds, right? Um, so yeah, that's the that's like the the fun thing for me with this team is basically because I know Shogun was like a couple years ago the new hotness, and then <laughs> he was always. The- that's like 2022 MSI. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that was when we had seen like him and Taki, and Taki was playing like the Camille Flex and everything else. Yep. Uh, and then BA for me has been playing for several years. Um, we've seen him like occasionally at Worlds. Uh, I think he was, he was at like that, what was that team? It was like Evos? He was in Evos? Um, and then he's like played f- played for Gam. He's played for like a lot of different teams. He's played for Team Wales. Uh, so like he's been on a lot of teams that have made international appearances. And I think he's never kind of like been a star player or someone that people think of as ah yeah this is one of the best sports in the world. But he's been consistently like performing well at the top of his league. Though of course Viking was also the team that had S of M come in and destroy everyone playing Huawei supports in spring after the whole collapse so i don't know maybe support is just a shit roll (laughs) (laughs) um but uh it's nice to see them like kind of at this tournament so yeah and when you talk i mean you can talk about them in tandem with gam for a minute we're gonna get to gam later but i think the other big thing Mm -hmm. is that i feel like a lot of people are gonna look at gam winning the split and they're gonna be like oh of course gam is like always the best team um but vikings was actually the much better team in that throughout the season Mm -hmm. um and they were the more consistent team whereas gam was still trying to kind of integrate the newer players onto their roster that we saw at MSI post, uh, you know, match fixing scandal when so many of these rosters had to be like retooled. Um, So in bringing up uh, Emo, Easy Love and Elio onto the team for MSI when they had like very little practice, Gam was still kind of integrating them onto the roster with Kiaia and Levi, or Levi rather, where... um, Mm -hmm. Vikings was more consistently like the better team, especially with Kati, Shogun, and BA, like just absolutely beating up on people. I actually like that they kind of kept that roster though. <clears throat> the, um, cause I was like, yeah. yeah, the GAM team, because I was like, oh, these, these guys got thrown on last minute, right? In off season, there will be transfers, XYZ, but they, Obviously, they went to MSI, so there's not a whole lot of time in the transfer window. But also the fact that all we get to see kind of all of these player, all of those players glow up or like come back and and do well. Like, uh, I'm the biggest self-professed emo fan. Um, you know, he's precious and whatever. The end. He's 19, so he's not that young, but he's young to me. So good times. Um, but yeah, I think this one is going to be a match that people are going to look at because the narrative on Matt is very low. Um, and so people will say, oh, of course, like, uh, VCS team could beat them, you know? So I think this will be a match that people will want to watch and be kind of excited because the, but the, even if the only narrative you have is, oh, they're coached by SFM. That, that's like one of my favorite things is people assume that if you have like a previously really good player as your coach, your jungle, your player in that role is going to be really good. So like in this analogy, this the assumption would be Gurry is going to be so good because SFM is coaching him, but it's very hit or miss. 
how well that works. And I don't know. It's just, it's very funny to me. It's still like hilarious to me that the poster is basically just S of M, like as the scent, like a third of the poster is S of M. So. <laughs> <laughs> so like again we've we've yeah. talked about like Adi Shogun and BA yeah. kind of being like either rising stars or like staples maybe not on the same level as Levi and Kiaya but still like really like big staples in BCS mm-hmm. um and you know S of M is the most I would say the most popular most beloved Vietnamese player of all time um, people really loved him when he yep. went over to LPL as well. He had a ton of fans. So in terms of like BCS cultural export. <laughs> yeah. In terms of like sunsetting, yeah. uh, like sadly sunsetting VCS, I think it is kind of appropriate, right? That we yeah. still have S of M like involved in some way and this mm-hmm. is his team and I can't disagree with the world's the finals, you know? He did uh, so we have he did. he did make a world's finals and the last time there was like a big jungle meta at worlds it's when he made world's finals so just saying uh but yeah, but yeah we can get mad for this you're getting uh, mad yeah no, well, yeah, like I'm giving yeah. mad the edge. Yeah, I, think I realized the way I phrased that made it sound like you're getting mad. I was like, I'm getting pissed. <laughs> I'm mad that people are disrespecting my lions. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do think mad will win. Yeah, our two, our two baby teams are in here. But, uh, Hunger Thieves and Mad. Yeah, I think I think Mad will still beat Viking, but I do think it's because again, I think what will happen is like normally in these situations, you would say. Like a team like VK should try to outplay them on the map, like do some lane swaps, stuff like this, whatever, to avoid the direct matchup versus Merwin or whatever. But I think Mad have better map play than them as well. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of why I favor Mad for the metro. But PSG PNG. Uh, other than Ooh. that, this matchup reminding me of Photoshop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because of png and like the psg file okay anyway um sorry we're not gonna right. talk about photoshop anymore i promise <laughs> i know people want to hear like okay what's the analytical matchup i actually think psg are the best team in this like plan so i think it's gonna be a really 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 tough matchup for pain um, but I do think it in talking about again a lot of these play-in teams, I do want to give them like their due. I think it's only fitting that we have this PSG roster here, mm-hmm. uh, and then additionally Pain Gaming. Who like when I remember Pain Gaming, I remember it as like Kami and BRTT's team from like twenty. 20- 13 i think they've been around since 2011 they were the first brazilian org they are Mm -hmm. by far and away i think still the most popular brazilian org even with other orgs like loud uh obviously gaining popularity in the region like when i think of the most popular brazilian orgs i still think of ping gaming and i think of kate stars um and it's really uh appropriate i guess that they are in the final like before um restructure yeah. cblol and lcs and lla become like americas i think it's really fitting that pain are um going to be the last like cblol cblol team right um because obviously a brazilian team will still qualify next year but uh it is not going to be the same and i think it's only fitting that pain the org is the one who is here. I think that's really cool. Um, You also have some like names on Mm -hmm. here that people will recognize. This is also pain after like a a series of so many finals where they kept coming in second place. Um, Finally have won again. This is an org that historically was like at the top of CBLOL and then previously their like other qualifying circuits that weren't officially CBLOL uh, before they did the a very similar league 
set up to other leagues. Um, so yeah, you have uh, Karaoke, who I believe went with. He's been to international competition before. I think it was yeah. with Team One. Um, and then um, Binkato. Binkato, who like kind of like Payne's trajectory over the past few years uh, has always been overshadowed by other Brazilian mids. Uh, so it's cool to see him here. Uh, Titan, mm -hmm. people will remember Curry used to be, I believe, a T1 trainee um, before coming over to Brazil. He played for Flamengo. Um, this team has their work cut out for them against PSG. Like I said, I think because PSG are by far and away the best team, by my estimation, in this play-in stage. Uh, I think Jinja is Jindaya. potentially the best player mm -hmm. in this stage. Uh, he is so good. Um, he's done wonders for this team. He and Maple, again, with the jungle mid shifts i think they'll both be really really comfortable um this team kind of still has relied on their i think their star trio of jinja maple and betty to just be like winning their lanes Not outplaying their opponent. i think he doesn't push forward on the map like betty will do so that jinja can uh i mean he's had some good showings he's had some rougher showings wow. um i think th honestly the player that i want to give credit to improving in my estimation is actually woody i was like really really down on woody uh previously but i think he has performed a lot better this split um what about and, yeah, I mean, yeah. Game I think this is starting good. mid Hong <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, no. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's also, I think it's also appropriate that like you have uh, Maple and Betty, former Flash Wolves, kind of previously, I guess, sunsetting LMS, now PSG, who I believe since joining in 2020 summer and taking over Talon, they've only missed internationals once. And I think it was 2022 Worlds. Um, so yeah, like this is an org that's been at the top of PCS essentially since they bought the slot slash yeah. shared the spot from Talon. And I also believe that Talon won that spring in 2020 as well. So um this is an org that since they're since coming in has been consistently at the top of the region um yep. there's like i said a mixture of like previously it was like unified and and kai wings team to me anyway um but now you have the former flashes of maple and betty this i believe maple said this is still a rumor but like he said it uh so it's a little bit more credible than previously but like he said this is probably his last year um which makes sense but also like is sad to me because i've mm -hmm. watched meeple for so many years yeah. and i think he still like has these moments where it's like holy shit like he's controlling this entire team fight on talia it's insane um but yeah i i think this team is like pound for pound better than the other the other teams in plans i i expect them to be the first team one of the first teams or if not the first team to kind of qualify out um yeah so I, it's a it's a rough first matchup for pain i'd say i think um very likely yes talon will do extremely well um versus like a lot of the other plan teams I think it's, again, like, very fun to see them here. I, the other element is, like, Brazil is still guaranteed a world spot, and very likely you will get, like, a team from the, in APAC from this region, so, like, the Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau region. So, it, and it, so it's like a, for me, this is a matchup where it's like, we'll probably see 
a like pain slash PSG again, I would assume, just because of their existing popularity and history of success. Uh, my favorite thing about PSG Talon, of course, is the fact that they just decided to go completely ham on socials. Um, when, let's see, I'm gonna find the, it, it's, it was, uh, fuck. It was the bank team. I'm losing my mind. See, this is what happens when I okay. don't write down okay. my thoughts before they have to go off bank hawks no uh the one that's like been to the world as well, uh, the, been to other world events um ctbc flying oyster oh, okay. they went super ham when cd ctbc uh got knocked down knocked out like dragging them for spending money on their roster and like all of this crap and not and not making it to worlds that was a banger i enjoyed that thank you psg talent twitter and social media manager i remember just quote tweeting it because they had like two tweets in a row and i just remember quote tweeting it like what is this beef someone explained the beef and they're like ctbc's roster is expensive it's like I'm not, i can see that from the tweet <laughs> why is PC, psg just like dragging them for zero i think they not yeah it was like because they lost to frank i think was the oh one. yeah 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 so it was like Damn, or fac, as I like to call them. So anyway, that's my favorite thing about PSG. Other than obviously Maple Fan, a big Maple fan for many, many years. Um, shout out to Flash Wolves and Betty, kind of. Audra. Audra represents. Okay. Uh, also, another fun thing for Payne is um, the fact that they have kept the same core three for top three for t three years. So Wiser, uh, Denkedo, and Karaoke have been on the roster for three years. So they've kept that core for three years. I mean, it's a world, which is like even an even cooler story, right? So yeah, I always like stories that like that. finishing second mm -hmm. uh, for, so, for so long. Yep. They obviously changed up ball in quite a bit in that three year period, but they kept like the same top three, which is very cool. All right, um, yeah, PSG, so we're basically saying one-sided BO3 is so far. Uh, thoughts on GAM versus SHG? This is really interesting. Um, <laughs> reviewing the, reviewing the, like, uh, Fukuoka Soft Bank Hawks games was i will say some of the most entertaining like of the blog review that i was doing because this team is just <laughs> they really love picking like wombo combo compositions that just like all work really really well together like just five champions all work really really well together regardless of like how those lanes will do initially um, and then they have a jungler in Forest who, like, I not to be confused. I don't even know. Better. Like, yeah, <laughs> who used to play Kindred would, on would, stream at would one point? People, would people confuse him with the? I mean, I feel uh, like people know Forest. If you say forest in like an, a Western East, that's Coast true. Contest, I do. I do think probably... of forest within and not forest the um, the jungler. Um, but basically, he came... to Japan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he came from um, initially actually HLE Academy, but then T1 rookies and T1 challengers. He was known for being an incredibly like aggressive to the point of potentially inting um, because he. Yeah. wouldn't always pay attention to like the lane state or when he could invade or when he could actually make a play i actually still think that's pretty consistent with his play on the hawks um i'm a little bit more i think down on forest than for example someone like nymera is who's watched the hawks for a really long time mm -hmm. um but i think the player that 
I'm really happy is here going through like this team's history um, is Dasher, who's been with the org since they started in LJL um, and is their mid laner. I also think he is their best performing player. Um, I think he's been kind of similar to um, Dinkato, actually. He's kind of been overshadowed by other mids in his region, um, but has been consistently good for like his entire time with the Hawks. So even when the Hawks struggled, he was doing pretty well. Uh, and I think he is the player that I'd be like watching out for the most on this roster outside of obviously Ebi, who like, mm -hmm. again, as we're talking about, APAC is getting absolutely crunched down. Um, in terms of what teams are going to be in it. And this is a, a kind of a sunsetting of LJL as well. Yeah. Um, so similar to how it not, not in the way that we were talking about PSG and pain, but like in the way we were talking about the v VCS, the two VS VCS teams, but I think it's only appropriate that Abby is also here for this. Um, and like, I think, is a massive part of this team's team fighting success. Uh, he is the best LJL top laner to ever have existed. Uh, I think he's in the running still for best LJL player ever, but then obviously you will also get into uh, arguments about... Um, other players in the region specifically why am i blanking on the 80 carries name um uh, oh my god not marble oh, not sorry. uh i'm talking about like historically okay okay, okay. uh yeah, see this is what like, happens Uta when Pond. we yes Uta Pond. wow Uta Pond, uh, the winningest i can't believe i forgot japanese Uta Pond's player name. That's is no longer terrible. winning yeah just yeah. take me out back honestly um the <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I was Sorry, the one who I watched that. like ten <laughs> Vikings games, and I still say the juggler was Tom Rio. Nice. Um, Sorry, where? Yeah, we um, should we just yeah, make no, a think... vague restructuring announcement like the LCO? I love how else like the o Oceanic uh, region releases like a statement about their league every year, and it's like gotten so vague to the point where they're just like lco yeah. is restructuring thank Will you for everything exist? and i was like what is this announcement <laughs> anyway that's yeah. that's like the level of making the round shit that's happening right now we're restructuring yeah, guys really bad. <laughs> yeah um i feel badly because obviously it's you uh i suck yeah. um but like the i think it's only appropriate that ebby is here um Again, he's in contention for best LJL player ever. I still think that probably goes to Udipon, but he's in the conversation. Um, I think it is. I can't remember. I always said I think it's Utapone. It's technically the pronunciation. You speak better Jap. You speak like some Japanese. What's the the typically the O pronunciation and the transliteration? Transliteration. Is it Pone or Pon? I remember Joshi yeah, would, would complain about this. It would be Pone. It would be yeah, Pone. Yeah. Joshi You're doing just it complained about yeah. this a lot. Yeah. So Yuta Pone, I think. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Now that we have gotten his name correct and remembered it, let's continue on. <laughs> um, but yeah, Marble is not him. Uh, Marble is like an up-and-coming Japanese uh, AD carry. Uh, I think on this team, you're going to see him playing, um, or at least in their lead up run to here um i think it is definitely more uh dasher focused and then marble's role in a lot of team fights was playing things that are more utility based like an ash or a gin um in setup for again these like ridiculous wombo combo comps that they like to run um going up against gam the most interesting thing for me is actually the Ebi Kiaya matchup mm -hmm. yeah. because I think That's Kiaya is, yeah, is still so freaking good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, unlike 
I mean, there were a lot of reasons why I thought he got super pressured at this past MSI. Part of it, like we already kind of said when we were comparing Vikings to GAM, was that GAM were integrating new players onto their roster in a very, very short amount of time. Um, but, and so that left like, okay, Levi and Kiai are very comfortable with each other, but the rest of the team is still learning and they're very, very new. Um, those players have integrated a lot better. I think that having Kiaya as the main target, uh, especially in a lane swap meta, really hurt Gam. Uh, it allowed teams, like, Kiaya came in with, like, insane statistics, did not leave yeah. with those same statistics Have uh, after his MSI performance. I think it's because teams could a lot more easily target him. Um, but I don't think that... Uh, the Hawks are going to be a team that does that, right? Because like I said, sometimes they even eschew having winning lane matchups if it means that they think they'll have like an insane 5v5 combination in team fights, um, which I think should give Kiaya an edge in this matchup. But Ebi is so experienced that sometimes, even though I don't think he's anywhere near what his peak was, mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes he just pulls out these games and he has an understanding of certain lane matchups that like you might not be familiar with. So I'm really looking forward to that lane matchup specifically. Um, I don't know. The Hawks are the Hawks are a really fun team yeah. to watch. Um, this this matchup, time. yeah, this matchup of the four initial ones is going to be the closest. I think. So yeah, I'm. I, I remember it's like I've been a long time Vista defender because I remember talking to LJL people and I'm like, I actually think Vista's like spacing and positioning on Enchanters is like really good. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, why do you like Vista? <laughs> so I am excited. He's Lee too, you know, like he was on the Miracle Run yeah, of yeah. what, 21? I mean, but I think in this matchup, um, Botlane is probably a an edge for uh fukuoka soft bank hawks nice uh they're also a baseball team yeah if anyone pays attention to japanese baseball we need to get the nippon okay, ham Emily. fighters in next yeah um i actually only usually play pay attention to koshian but fine and high school about, not a yeah yeah I know that because I watched that anime that you said you didn't recommend, but is still like your favorite. So, touch, yeah, because it's so it. long, yeah, yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I did actually watch it, so I know about Koshien now. Anyway, <laughs> as we, as we uh, that aside, um, but I think that that's like I don't think we're at a point anymore where Easy Love and Elio are as much of a liability as they were in spring. But I still think like Marble and Vista are exciting to me um, comparatively. So I think that that's one that can be really fun. Like like people will say Ki, I, and I expect these teams like I expect teams like TL etc to still lane swap, but I don't expect these teams to lane swap. Uh, as much just because they'll want to play the matchups um, and they'll want to like do very simplistic team fighting get to the point where we can leverage our top lane advantage stuff like that uh, I also am like I don't know this is maybe one of the EVKIA excuse me wow it's maybe one of the coolest matchups in all of play in for me um, just because these two top laners have been so huge for their region. And I think I'm like sad that Evie didn't get an opportunity to play LEC slash LCS until he was out of his peak. I still think, cause I think he would have benefited a lot more and he's still obviously benefited from being in Europe. And I still think he's a very good top laner. And I still think it made sense for him to have gotten picked up when he did. Um, it's just unfortunate he didn't perform as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think, and then Kiaya, like Emily has told the story, I think, for, like, Kiaya is like a very interesting story because he did the role swap and everything else. So, yay. He learned, he literally learned Vietnamese playing League of Legends. Yeah. Kind of nuts. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there is still like an insanely good documentary out there on him where the GAM, I think, produced themselves and talked about like his his journey and like difficulties and stuff like that that's really good i'll try to find it so we can like link it in the description because it tells the story way better than the like two minutes i was ever allowed to like kind of try to go through really Condense quickly on it. broadcast i think goldborg also has touched upon this as well um the year after i think i brought it up in 2022 20, yeah, um, 2022. So I remember because I was in Prague that day and Emily really wanted to tell the story. And production, like a lot of Emily's stories kind of get like put as the last thing, like an if we get time for it sort of thing. And production was like telling Dash to move. And Dash yeah. was like, no, I know Emily wants to tell the story. And he just <laughs> tossed it to Emily anyway so that she could tell the tell story. So. Fun James time. is still like an amazing person, guys. Yeah. Uh, I miss him so much. Um, he really is like just a really good human being. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I think it was a good value add to the broadcast anyway because it is a really good story. And people, if you watch Play In as like an English language fan, you should have great stories like that to root for the teams because you probably haven't watched them that much. So, oh. yeah. And hey, then they beat T. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. I'm actually still sad about that, but whatever. Um, sorry. Uh, this, is, this is a really interesting matchup. Um, I can actually definitely see the Hawks taking it. I am cautiously favoring Gam, although I think the one thing I'm unsure about actually is... Um, emo's meta like shifting the meta because i think he got really like as we already saw at msi really comfortable on tristana more than anything else but um he was really comfortable on tristana he was really comfortable on corky he played the lucian um yone i think is still going to be a super high prio pick which is also something he's seen success on but i'm very curious to see him off of ad mids um it's like the Biggest question mark I actually have around GAM and their performance um, at this tournament is how well Emo is able to adjust to what we expect is going to be more of a mage-focused meta. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be really curious to see that only because, like I said, I think his performance on 80 mids was something he was really, really comfortable with. And... Um, Oh man, do I favor Gam in this? Ugh. Ugh. Uh, my boy Emo's about to roll up and smash Dasher like he's never been smashed before. His name is Dasher because he better run. Anyway, let's go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I mean, again, this is going to be the closest. I won't be surprised if either team win. I guess I'm tentatively favoring Gam because I do see a situation <laughs> where... The Hawks, dr again, draft themselves something like three three losing lanes uh, <laughs> and get pushed in because they really, really want that team fight composition. And I think Gam are a team that will be able to take advantage of that, especially on topside and jungle. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like this is a it's an interesting this lineup. is a really, really interesting matchup. It's definitely the best, in my opinion, should be the best and closest matchup of the initial four. Yeah, but Gam is winning because emo. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my analysis. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think, like, again, bot lane should be a big advantage. And the difference between, like, this kind of matchup and a lot of matchups that um, Gam could have is that Evie is good. So, like, for example, if they were playing as PSG, which is a matchup that we that we saw before, right? They have like the the Audra option. Um, <laughs> Audra, I can see the heat. Audra is just taking so many shots today, and then, uh, but yeah, I was I watching. Uh, yeah, like after I did all my VOD review, I watched the video that Kedro put out, where like Molecule is going through these teams, and he said 
And Aja sometimes picks counterpicks and isn't very good on them. So that's fun to watch. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> well, I loved Molecule's, like, Trovi Kati. This is, again, another aside. Uh, Trovi Kati graphic that he made, which was, like, this is a comparison. And he had, like, three caveats. It's like, I know he's not yeah. as good as Trovi. I know that it's just Vietnam. I know, like, it's he's a competition isn't that good and it's I just thought it was fun and I was like bro I don't care just like you found this comparison you really like Kati make the graphic I don't care if you're like preemptively trying to field off the the, the rabid Chovy fans just like make the graphic and own it because if you get angry Chovy fans you get more interactions so it's fine um <laughs> so yeah, yeah. The most fun statistic is the Junja having the, what was it, third highest CS per minute of like any player, any yeah. player and then like top for jungler. Yeah. yeah. A lot of those because again, like he just has a lot of free reign mm -hmm. with pushing lanes that PSG give him. Anyway, we're off topic. 100 Thieves versus Rainbow Seven. Woo! I love 100 uh, Thieves and Rainbow Seven. Oh, Rainbow Seven's really cool, though. And I know it's like a weird thing to say, but they've had this. They've also like kept their jungle bot core. Um, and an Audi is like way back in my day. Audi was like the guy, and by the guy I mean kept going to these tournaments representing LATAM. Lat also, I have multiple Peruvian, half Peruvian friends for whatever reason. So Audi is Rafa, veteran, uh, etc. cetera. So uh, also Screwface, but unrelated. Uh, Audi <laughs> is... Uh, Audi is, is, so he's like been one of the sole Peruvian representatives in league for many, many years. So uh, shout outs to Audi. And then Seo is someone I think is like been habitually underrated. It, okay, this is like a small aside, but I feel like the entire roster at past tournaments got overshadowed because their top laner's name was Bong. Can we just accept that Bong wasn't good? And that people just liked him, and English language casters just liked him because his name was fucking Bong. Can we just accept that? Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, now we have Summit. You've so been they'll... waiting to talk about <laughs> Now we have Summit, so they'll get overshadowed again because Summit played in NA. So anyway, <laughs> woo, let's go. Oh my god. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the big thing for me with this team, again, like we're talking about, uh, LLA does get teams in both the North and South, but they are not going to be mm -hmm. um, auto-qualifying, like the Brazilian team. So they're going to have to duke it out with other teams. Uh, I think the big thing for me with R7 is still that it's very fitting that Audi is here for kind of the last hurrah. Um, he is someone who I think I first really, really took note of in 2016. Uh, I'm pretty sure 20, yeah, 2016, when he was um, maybe it was as early as 2015, 2016, I think, though, um, when he was of Lion Gaming. And I think that was kind of the last time where we really saw um, a Latin American team really trying to punch up uh, due to their performance at, was it still IWCI? Yeah. Um, anyway, like Audi is this kind of staple jungler of the region. I think, again, he is not nowhere near what his peak used to be. But I think it's really fitting that he is here for um, Latin America's last run as like a, a region. Um, I think the big differences between these teams, like I, I think it's going to be a tough time for them to 
qualify into the main Swiss stage, but I think if it happens, it's going to be through map movements of Audi and Lions, their support, and the two of them working well together. Um, I think they will... They have an interesting matchup into 100 Thieves. I still think 100 Thieves are uh, significantly worse team than, say, like FlyQuest and TL when you're comparing the three LCS teams. But I also think that the patch itself should be something that they're a bit more comfortable on, especially if they're not lean swapping because i think even with improvements that they made towards responding to swaps it was definitely never something that they really were super comfortable with especially with how they want sniper to be able to play so um the sniper summit matchup is kind of interesting to me yeah it's kind of uh but then i also think that the river audi matchup is very interesting because i think this is a meta that Again, when you have a jungler like River and he can play stuff like his and Chow or Jarvan or something where he's affecting his lanes more, it's he's going to look significantly more comfortable. And I also think Quid, um, even with improvements that he eventually made on AD mids, is going to be a lot more comfortable on melee mids and mages, which is looking like what the world's meta is going to be. Um, and going up against, uh, Kaney, who is previously the Infinity mid laner, I believe, but then also was on APK Prince and Afrika Freaka, uh, Freaka Freaks systems. Um, that should be interesting. I am favoring 100 Thieves in this matchup Shocking. pretty significantly, um, but I will say, if R7 are able to make noise, I think it really starts with either Summit having like an insane performance where he gets a counter pick and like takes over the entire map. Um, he's still the same player to me. He has the same exact mm -hmm. credible strengths. He has the same exact weaknesses. Rage uh, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, which is is kind of cool, right? Because like you go in and you're like, this guy is like really, really good at this. And then also you can exploit him like this. Um, but the, the Audi river matchup is super interesting to see how well the two of them can kind of play around their lanes. Um, but yeah, I think I'm giving the edge to hundred thieves. Uh, if R seven are able to do anything, I think it's going to be, like I said, either summit having like an insane winning matchup and taking over or, Audi and Lions actually, especially Lions, detaching from bot and being able to make plays around the map with Audi, um, specifically to potentially get either Summit or Kaney ahead. Um, but I think 100 Thieves are going to want to do the same thing with Sniper and Quid. And pound for pound, I just see Quid, Quid and River as a better mid jungle duo. Yeah. Also, more Audi fun facts. He played in the WCG qualifier in 2013, which WCG is a tournament that has not existed for many, many years. So hold on. Also, his original name was the Odd One Black. So that's also funny. Oh, yeah. He was, a, yeah. he was an Odd, Odd One, One fan. fan. Yep. So. I forgot about that. Banger. Also, his, his first team was called Ducks on Fire. So. <laughs> these are the, the these are the team names I live for. Anyway, um yeah, I think the summit summit versus NA in any capacity, obviously most people would like to see it versus him versus TL. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't think that will happen is going to be entertaining for a lot of people. Um it's it's cool that we get NA versus Lada matchup before Latam basically gets absorbed. Um, Miraki was saying earlier that Pain Gaming should send their academy team. They want Americas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh but really fun yeah, yeah uh i i liked that it was i mean to to your the point that you made last week when we were talking about dragon steals like unceremonious exit from the tournament you were like hopefully this means that teams whine less about like ew i don't want to scrim yeah cb law or lla teams ew. uh they have cooties. Because, it's hey, same in gaming, beat fear. So, you know what? Yeah. Same vibes. That was, as... a, that was, a, that was a very fun best of five, actually. Same <laughs> vibes as in elementary school when kids would complain about other kids having cooties. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always like to do when people complain about their scrim opponents. It's like, ooh, they have cooties. It's like, shut up, Kelsey. Like, no, this is how you sound to me. Anyway. Um, cool. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure 100 Thieves will win, but you never know. Who can say? Maybe they will, maybe they will just get summited. I mean, it's, it's a valid concern, right? Because it's, I think Sniper can get caught off guard by, like, counter picks pretty easily. And just we'll try to go for like the flex trade and then he'll go down zero three <laughs> he has had less of that problem recently but um this year it was a thing so that could be a win con for them i also think uh but we'll see like like you said i think i've been a big river fan all year so in general i think wanted you should be favored I think, I mean, the the big thing for me is I do think it's shifting into a more comfortable meta for both Quid and River, and mm -hmm. I think Quid and River work really, really well together, so. Yep. All right. I think that's, that's it for this week's episode. Mm -hmm. We made the rounds. The rounds will be made. Um, I'll try to get this out very soon, because World starts tomorrow. Um, and then... Ooh. We'll go from there, but it's been fun. I'm glad that we made so many verbal errors today. That was cool. God. I that. Yeah. <laughs> especially yeah, back me. Now, Definitely, especially me. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Other thing is I've shamelessly been playing Final Fantasy 16. That's fun. And um, if you guys are interested in Boise State, we started our matches this week. And I didn't tweet about Rocket League yesterday, so I feel bad about that. Um, but we are playing in the PEC, Rocket League 1. In their PEC and Ma Mountain West games. Today we have Overwatch and Smash in PEC and Mountain West. So I'll tweet about those later, probably. So um, thanks, everyone. Have a good day. And subscribe to the coffee.